This lab tutorial is about how to power TLO72 chip. We will also learn how to build a simple op-amp circuit using TLO72. TLO72 is an 8-pin chip, and it has two operational amplifiers. Just like other integrated circuits, TLO72 requires power supplies. So we need to power TLO72 with a positive voltage source and a negative voltage source. So pin 8 and pin 4. Let's look at the data sheet of TLO72. The data sheet was downloaded from the TI web website. It says the power supplies should be positive 15 volts and negative 15 volts. So pin 8 should be connected to positive 15 volts. Pin 4 should be connected to negative 15 volts. So the small dot indicate where pin 1 located at. So 8 should be connected to positive 15. 4 should be connected to negative 15 volts. That is just to make the integrated circuit work. So we need to power the chip. So we have two op-amps in the circuit. Let's look at the Agilent DC power supply. We need two power supplies to power TLO72. The Agilent DC power supplies has a, a dual power supplies for up to positive and negative 25 volts. So we can adjust the positive 25 volts to be 15 volts. And we need to set up the negative power supply to be negative 15 volts. Notice there are two separate power supplies. We need to adjust them separately. So that's how to power the op -end. And here, the COM, C-O-M, indicate that's all the signal grounds located. Let's look at a simple inverting amplifier circuit. Let's learn how to make a simple inverting amplifier. Firstly, we need to consider the power supplies to the chip. We need to power the chip. Like I just mentioned, pin 8 should be connected to positive 15, and 4 should be connected to negative 15. We can use the first op-amp. So pin 2 is connected to the inverting input. 3 is the non-inverting input. So 8 is connected to the positive power supply. 4 should be connected to the negative power supply. We need to make the chip straddle across the bridge on the breadboard. So that is eight pins, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. When you look at the circuit, firstly, we can connect pin eight to positive 15 volts. So we need to power this wire with positive 15 volts. And pin four should be connected to negative 15 volts. The green wire should be connected to negative 15. So let's look at that. We have a common ground in the circuit. So pin 3 is connected to the common ground. So 3, the blue wire is connected to the bottom line in the breadboard. So this line should be connected to the signal, all the signal grounds. There are two resistors in the circuit. One of them is a one kilo ohm resistor between the input signal and pin 2. So here is the one kilo ohm resistor from pin 2 to the input signal of, uh, of the circuit. So we use V in indicate. That is where we need to send the input signal. 
we have another resistor which is 3.3 kilo ohm. It's a cross pin two and one. So cross one and two. We have a 3.3 kilo ohm resistor. Now we just built a very simple inverting amplifier. The next step is to power the op amp chip. So let's look at here. Pin 8 needs to be connected to positive 15. So we can connect it to the positive 25 volts power supply. And pin 4 should be connected to negative 15. So we can use the negative 25 volts power supply to generate negative 15 volts. All the signal common grounds should be connected here. So that is the bottom line. All the holes on the bottom line are connected together. For the input signal to the inverting amplifier, we can use the 6 volts power supply. So the input signal is sent through here. The input signal common ground should be connected to all signal grounds. The output signal is from pin 1. So here is our circuit. So positive 15 volts is connected here. Pin 4 should be connected to negative 15 volts. That is the positive 15 volts. And all signal grounds is connected to the bottom line. The green wire is connected to the negative 15 volts power supply. Now we need to connect the input signal. So let's turn on the power. We need to adjust the positive 25 volts to be positive 15 volts. So we can adjust it, display limit, voltage current, shift it from current to voltage. So now it can generate 15 volts. Then we can set up the limit of the current to be 0 0.1 amps, just for the security reason. Then we adjust the negative 25 volts to be negative 15. Similarly, we can adjust the upper limit for the current. Notice here the positive 25 and negative 25 volts power supplies. There are two separate power supplies. We have to set it, set them separately. So we just power the TLO72 chip. We need to send the input signal here. We need to use a separate power supply and send the input signal. We can use the 6 volts power supply from the adjutant DC supp power supplies. So we can adjust it to be maybe 1 volt as the input signal. So here is the 6 volts power supply with reference to the common ground. So all the signal grounds are connected together. Let's assume that our input voltage is 1 volt. So we need to click on 6 volt button and adjust it to be 1 volt. Now it's 2 volts. So we need to lower it to 1 volt. OK, so the input signal is 1 volt. The output signal is 3, negative 3.35 volts. So let's look at this circuit. The input is 1 volt. This is a simple inverting amplifier. So the output voltage should be negative 3.3 volts. 
So we can measure the output voltage across pin 1 and common ground and show it on the digital multimeter. So let's review the important steps to power a TL072 chip. Pin 8 needs to be connected to positive 15 volts. And pin 4 should be connected to negative 15 volts. All the signal common grounds are connected together. So we use the 6 volts power supply to generate the input signal to the inverting amplifier.